Uh, after seven months, the story times are back. Let's talk about it. Hi guys, and welcome back to another video on the channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be bringing back the story times. And um, this is episode number 9, 10, 11, something like that. But today's story time is something that I've actually wanted to talk about for quite a while now. Some of you may or may not know that um, I was very briefly working abroad in Italy th from April the 17th to the 1st of May. Um, and this is something that I don't know if I've mentioned on the channel yet, but I think something that deserves its own video. Um, I've also seen your guys' comments for vlogs, don't worry, they will be coming at some point. I just need to think of a way to do that, like how I'm going to get around that, but I'll try and get that sorted. So yeah, story time, um, my experience working abroad in Italy. Let's talk about it. So, for a bit of background, um, I believe it was January, February sort of time, and some of you may or may not know that I go to college, um, obviously I'll not name the location of the college, but um, fl flight school basically, <laughs> and um, they announced that they were sending a handful of students abroad to Italy in April slash May. The other, um, now I was actually, I had originally been picked to go in June, but my birthday was in June and I didn't really know anyone else that was going in June, so I got switched to April, so that's a little, um, little tip bit there. So, yeah, um, I'm kind of glad that I did go earlier on, to be honest as well, but um, I was missing the nice weather in June, so, and I didn't get to use the pool either in April, which was a massive rip-off, so... Yeah, the school has, um, not the school, the college has announced this Italy trip, and you get, and um, there's like a survey sort of thing. Basically, you have to write to them and say why you think you should go. And so I've done that, and then about two weeks later, I uh, get a call, and they say, look, you've, you've been picked to go. So obviously, I'm ecstatic to hear that, because, you know, two weeks in Italy for free. <laughs> um, he was going to say no to that. Though you did have to pay a 50% deposit, though, but... That's just the whole thing, but compared to um, going normally, I think it's pretty good for two weeks as well. And um, that brings me to my next talking point, and there were the trips. Now, I had to look back at the um, the trip plan, because, just to recap where we went, because we went to a lot of places. So, the trips, we went to, this isn't in any order by the way, we went to Bologna, we did that last actually. Went to Milan, that was great. San Marino, very nice. Um, we visited a five-star hotel. Um, still doesn't beat the Premier Inn, but there you go. There was Florence, there was a Gradara Castle, and there was Ravenna. I remember Florence being a... I'll talk about them briefly individually. So, Bologna, obviously we went to on the last day. Just sort of walked around for about two hours. Wasn't really that eventful. It rained for a start. I know, right? It rained. <laughs> So, that was just a whole thing. It was it was alright for what it was, though. Um, got some nice pictures, um, which I still have saved. So, I can put that in a separate video if you guys want. Um, but yeah, I thought it was fine for what it was. Um, probably could have done it a bit earlier. Um, but yeah, it was decent. Milan, that was amazing, <laughs> as you can expect. San Marino, I was really surprised that that was a two a one and a half hour one and a half 45 minutes sort of journey to san marino where we where the driver actually parked the coach on the edge of a cliff so you know i was fearing for my life at that point amazing driver though um big shout out to him and then yeah san marino just a lot of cliffs man <laughs> a lot of cliffs but um to de it's a decent walk you know you get your steps in over there um we're walking through a wooded forest area for, I believe, an hour and a half, so that was interesting. There was the five-star hotel, which was, yeah, it was alright, I guess. I just remember there being a park there and one of my mates pushing us in a swing. There you go. So, Florence, that was a long-ass journey. Um, absolute pain. I believe I had to take the train for that. Although that might have been Ravenna, it was one of them. One of them I had to take the train, and the other one was just a really long journey. I can't remember which one it was though, but um, they were both beautiful. 
And then there was uh, Gradara Castle, which we did on the very last day, and I believe we only got to spend like an hour and a half there, so didn't really see too much, but again, fine for what it was. Um, I enjoyed it overall. I was not good by the end of it though, so yeah. Oh, that's one of the um, the main talking points that I have. Um, <laughs> this is in no particular order, um, by the way. I'm just this is just from my notes. The other thing was the flight being delayed at Verona Airport. Yeah, not good. So we had to fly from Manchester Airport to Verona Airport, which made no sense when we could have just flew from Newcastle to Bologna. Although actually. Actually, I do take that back. I think it might have been cheaper to go from Manchester to Verona. I'm not sure. Or maybe, um, maybe the flight was just short. I've got no idea. But yeah, um, Verona Airport, the flight was delayed, which I really could not be asked for. Because we were waiting, yeah, it was only an extra hour and, hour and a half of just waiting around. And that's when we'd already, when I'd already checked in through the, um, through Borden, I guess. Where you had to wait for the flight and, um. It couldn't really do do anything because there was just a bunch of people scattered around waiting for their flight to take them back home. It wasn't great. But yeah, um, if I don't remember if my passport, I don't know what I would have done. Yeah, the flight was still late, but that's that's just a that's just a thing. That's something like that's gonna happen um, eventually in your lifetime. Um, the other turn point was meeting new people on this trip again. <laughs> Being in Italy for two weeks, it felt really weird being that far away from home for that amount of time. And um, I'm not ashamed to admit it or anything. The first night, scary. Yeah, it was scary. So, but you know, meeting new people, that definitely helped a lot. That got us through it and um, sort of brung me out of my shell a bit more, became a bit more open with people. I'm not just saying this to get views or attention or anything. This is the genuine truth, and um, people that were there and that were, you know, part of that, thank you, I miss you a lot. Some people um, that were there st still speak to in college, so that's good. Meeting new people and developing new friendships, that's what it's all about. Um, but yeah, just a massive thank you to everyone that was there, you made the two weeks totally worth it. <laughs> Wouldn't change any of the, the late night shenanigans on the balcony as well. <laughs> That was amazing. Um, KFU, it, I believe, was 9 or 10 o'clock, and um, we just weren't having that. So, yeah. Whoops. <laughs> the next thing was, on the first night, this is a bit of a funny story. Um, the charging ports, you know, the one, the special ones that you have to get, the European charging ports, you know, how they're different of what they are up here in England. So, um, I had rung over some power banks. And they wouldn't fit into the wall. And so that was such a ball ache to get in. Because I thought genuinely that I was screwed throughout the entire two weeks. But luckily one of my um, roommates um, had a spare. He had a plug. So I just plugged my phone into there. But I was terrified. I'm thinking how am I going to charge my phone. Some people weren't, you know, as lucky. And they just had to um, have their phone die during the night. So if that happened to you, I'm sorry. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. But yeah, everyone literally the next day was just scrambling to get charging ports that would actually fit. That was just a whole thing. But yeah, a minor inconvenience, but funny nonetheless. Um, yeah, the food, the scran up there, the food up there was absolutely amazing. 10, 10 out of 10. Um, you probably already knew that, though, I'm just mentioning it now. If you're gonna, um, yeah, scran and Ellie, amazing. The next thing was the, um, showers. <laughs> um, oh, this doesn't get taken down, but, yeah, the showers. Um, obviously we'd get up every morning, shower, because there was three of us in one room. Um, so that's just a whole thing. I thought, I'm kind of lucky that there was only three of us, as opposed to being there being five or six of us, because a lot of people had a shower room with a lot of different, um, people. And, you know, that's just a whole case of, um, rushing around. And even then, I was going to getting up at like seven and was still rushing around to be there by um seven thirty I believe it was which um because what they go and get everyone sword for the trips and that that was just a whole thing. But yeah, um you could hear people shouting through the balcony as well. That was interesting. 
had to wake up very early, um, but yeah. Gone to sleep because of the two twats I shared a room with on <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> but yeah, um, the work placements were decent as well. I mainly worked in the reception and in the kitchen for about two hours each. The guy that I spoke to in the kitchen did not understand a hint of English, so he understood one word though, and that was finished. So when I'd finished all of the um, dishes and setting up all the tables, I'd go, finished. And he'd understand that, so you know, there was a language barrier, but I just had to, um, you know, work around it. But it's all part of the fun, because we did have Italian lessons there, and honestly, it's not stuck with us at all. <laughs> I do not remember a hint of Italian since I was there. Um, yeah. I'll go my bad on that one. Next thing, did I enjoy it? Absolutely, of course. Um, I regret not enjoying it while I was there. I think I was just a bit scared being that far away from home. I wouldn't say scared, it was it just it just felt weird. But um didn't really feel like didn't really feel right when we were all leaving to um go back home on the first. But um yeah, my, it was amazing, I really enjoyed it. Um and given the chance to go again, I would definitely go again. So yeah, the trip back home as well. That was a nightmare because obviously the flight got delayed. Then we were still already not good from because we had to travel back to Manchester Airport and then get the coach back to Newcastle, and that was like three hours, and I just could not be bothered. But yeah, <laughs> Italy 2023, you'll be missed. <laughs> you have a special place in my heart for all the ups and downs that you've um. That I've encountered. I uh, was being up there, so but overall, amazing trip. Um, I was blessed to go, and thank you for the college to giving me for giving me such an amazing opportunity and for allowing me to go and um to do what I did. So that was my experience working in Italy. I know this is a bit of a different video, but um, just hope that for, that for anyone that's doing this in the future to see that it's worth it and opportunities like this don't happen very often so when they do when they do you know present themselves you've got to take you've got to take it head on so hope this um you guys have enjoyed this video um i've been running for quite a while now but yeah um thank you to everyone that was in italy as well just one last time thank you um, and i'll see you guys in the next video hopefully later this week maybe next week um can't guarantee when I'll next be on here, but I will see you guys very soon. Goodbye.